The New England Patriots are still high on the big three when it comes to number three in the upcoming 2024 NFL draft. But could another underdog from Michigan change those plans? Stick around. You're about to be locked into this Mock Draft Monday episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Not only is Locked On Patriots a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, but we are also free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So smash that subscribe button and download and follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to ensure that you get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. Reach out to me. Let me know what's on your mind because we want to know what you're thinking on X at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. While you're out there showing some Locked On Patriots love social media style, please follow our account there as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And Pats fans, today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. And Pats fans, thank you so much for joining us here today. Hope you had an amazing weekend. The 2024 NFL Combine is in the books. And folks, an exciting weekend. Great action. A lot of standout performances. Xavier Worthy proving that he is, without a doubt, the fastest man on the planet. 4.21 seconds. Wow. Murph, that, that is amazing. I can't, I, I can't blink I, that fast. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Huge tip of the cap to Xavier Worthy. And we're going to talk about some of the great prospects you saw on the field in Indianapolis over the weekend because it's Mock Draft Monday, folks. And if it's Mock Draft Monday... It's hashtag Locked On Murph Monday. And joining me, as always, is the legend himself, that count of Murphy Fisto, my good friend Thomas Murphy. Thank you for coming to me in friendship today, Don Murph. Oh, always my pleasure, Michael. Always my pleasure. It's not Monday if we, we're not hanging out talking talking Patriots, talking draft, having, having a good old time. Absolutely. And a good weekend it was. In Indianapolis, Indiana, Lucas Oil Stadium, under the very banner that says AFC finalist, I still can't get enough of that, Murph. It's still funny. I don't care. It's still hilarious. And we're still going to laugh at it and make fun of it here on Locked On Patriots because it's just what we do, folks. But bottom line, there were a lot of standout performances. The big three quarterbacks did not showcase their talents. They're going to wait for their pro days or simply let their resumes do the talking for them. But there were some standouts at the quarterback position. There were definitely some players that caught Murph's sharp eye when it comes to offensive tackle. And as we said before, some of the skill positions definitely show that they have the speed and the savvy to be immediate impact players in the NFL. But Murph, it is Mock Draft Monday, and it just so happens that one of the big stories coming out of the Combine coincides with our lead Mock Draft here on the show. So without further ado, unless you have any objections, but I say we kick it right off. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's get into it. Absolutely. And the submission this week comes from our good friend, Luke Kemper, and he can be found on Twitter at Luke Kemper three. Lo and behold, Luke has the Patriots dipping into the quarterback well, but not in the way you might think, folks. For those of you listening and not viewing on YouTube, Luke trades down a little bit, picking up a first rounder from Minnesota in 2025, a second rounder from Minnesota in 2025, and arriving the Patriots at the number 11 position for their first pick in the draft. And he picks Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. Yep. Now, Murph, we're going to flash this once again because there are some other picks that we definitely want to get to here. But McCarthy is kind of the story of the weekend. Said a lot of the right things in his interviews. Definitely looks like someone who's ready to take that next step. Solid workout on the field. 
Number 11, I think, sounds about right for McCarthy if he's starting to climb these draft boards. And this is not a foreign concept. We've heard some very high-ranking draft Mm -hmm. pundits say the same thing, that he actually may be climbing up to the level of Jaden Daniels right now. Murph, we love Michigan quarterbacks here in New England, obviously. We do. We're always going to have an affinity for a Michigan quarterback here. Number 199 will always live in our hearts as number 12, the greatest of all time. And Murph and I don't hesitate when we say that, folks. But it's hard to compare J.J. McCarthy to Tom Brady. But he's a national champion. He's saying all the right things about wanting to succeed. If the Patriots were to pull off Luke's Hall here, get down to number 11 and take J.J. McCarthy, what say you, Don Murph? Do you object to this? Um, Probably not at 11. I, I don't really think it's going to happen. Um, but no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be totally against it at eleven. It, it's. It's. Yeah. It, it, it's a bit too soon for me. But with the showing that he had at the combine, um, you know, you can understand why he's the flavor of the month. But there are other guys that I would rather take later, mm-hmm. and take care of business at the top of the draft with somebody that I think is going to be able to come in and contribute right away. Look, McCarthy is not someone that's going to illuminate the stat sheet. When you take a look at resumes, his is not going to be the one to pop off of the screen, especially when you compare him with guys like Caleb Williams or Drake right. May, or even a Jaden Daniels, which now he's being uh, you know compared to. Last season, 2,991 yards, 22 touchdowns, 72% completion percentage. The thing that I like about J.J. McCarthy and the thing that I think Patriots fans are warming to and what we saw on the field in Indianapolis this weekend tells me that this kid is a very good decision maker with the football. He only threw four picks last year. Right. He knows how to pick his spots on the field. This kid plays big when it matters the most. And that's, I think, where Patriots fans will feel a kinship with someone like a J.J. McCarthy. Right. When he was talking and he was giving his pre- workout interviews sounded a little like a former Wolverine when he said the following when he said the only stat I cared about was W's we did a pretty good job in that category you can almost hear another former Michigan quarterback saying my favorite is the next one right um again I know I'm doing a disservice folks I know I'm probably angering some people out there when I compare him to Tom Brady but you can't help it the Michigan connection is there This kid will not be Tom Brady on the field. First of all, their games are different. And second of all, there's only one Tom Brady. But if McCarthy can come in and show that ability to play big when it matters most, continue to be accurate, move the ball down the field, some of the knocks against this kid can be erased with good coaching. And that's where a guy like Alex Van Pelt or a TC McCartney come in. Guys that have experience coaching up quarterbacks and getting them to play to their maximum potential And that's where I think also the rumors over the weekend about a quarterback, a veteran quarterback coming in to maybe help to move him along. Maybe that's where some of this makes sense if the Patriots are going to look at McCarthy with a serious sharp eye. Yeah, I agree. And but, you know, I I also think that there are a lot of other teams that are very high on McCarthy right now. Mm -hmm. I would I would lose my mind if they took him at three. Oh, right now I'm the take the sure thing. Take the guy that you know is going to be there for the next five or ten years. And with me, it, you know, it, it's the offensive lineman right mm-hmm. now. And I would love if the Patriots, you know, if they, they traded down to five or they, mm-hmm. they traded down to six. They still ended up getting uh, getting my man, uh, Joe Walt, or, or one of the other tackles that we're going to be talking about in just a minute or two. Absolutely. And we are going to be talking about offensive tackles in less than a minute, believe it or not, because we are going to move on with Luke's draft here. But bottom line, I completely agree with you. I like J.J. McCarthy's game, but I'm not willing to swap him out for any one of those big three. If the Patriots are staying at three and they're going quarterback at three, I'm going Jaden Daniels. I'm going Drake May. I'm going Caleb Williams over J.J. McCarthy. So I still think it's a good pick. And I I applaud Luke for what he did here in trading down and being able to pick him up at 11. I think it's great value. I just don't know how realistic it's going to be in the grand scheme of things when there are quarterback hungry teams that are still ahead of where the Patriots would be picking at that level. Murph, Luke does address the offensive line. He addresses the tackle position at number 34 out of Washington. I'll tell you, Washington had an amazing combine. Boy, I'll tell you, between Rome and between Penix. Of course, right here, you can see Luke picking up Troy Fautano at number 34. 
Right. Murph, a lot of people were talking about this kid possibly kicking into guard because of his size. A lot of people right. weren't sure it was going to translate. Um, but bottom line, I think he put those concerns to bed when he weighed in. 6'3", 3'17", 34 and a half inch arms. He's got a pretty good wingspan. I think he stays at tackle, and I think he's got that length. And I do believe this kid has the ability to play the position. I if do, the too. If the Patriots grab him at 34, your thoughts on Troy Fultz? I would be, I would be ecstatic. I would, I would love this. You know, he, uh, this kid has excellent move, movement skills. Um, he, he's, he's big enough to play the position. He's strong enough to play the position. He has, um, he has the mental toughness to play the position. Like I said, his lateral movement and his, uh, his, I mean, he gets so low for a guy that, that, that is this big. It's, it's really, it's mm. really impressive. Um, he explodes out of the, uh, off the snap and, and hits with, with really impressive skills at, he's almost everything that, that you would want. I, I have a hard time believing after this combine that he would be there in the second the patriots might have to trade back up to mm -hmm. uh to get him uh in the first round this kid's got great athleticism for a guy his size murph touched on it a nine foot five broad jump top right. 10 result for a player at his position 32 and a half inch vertical shows that he can get up he can make the moves when he needs to i think he's going to be a really yeah. good tackle in this league and i would love to see him in a patriots uniform the question here is logistics is it realistic that the patriots could make a move to get him at the time they're going to be on the clock if they right. can and he's sitting there i don't see how they lay off him no neither do i and that that doesn't preclude them taking a, a tackle in the first round and bookending things um i really like uh the double dip at tackle, especially if the Pats move down and they pick up a couple of extra seconds and they're able to move back up. I think the guy, this guy's a top 25 pick. Yeah, without question. I agree with you as well. It's grading time, Murph. What are we thinking about Luke's haul here? Start to finish your grade for Luke Kemper. Uh, I think this is a solid B plus draft. I mm -hmm. really do. Uh, I think he could have done a little bit more. I, you know me, I don't like the trading out into next year. So that, that kind of, um, you know, I would have rather seen more top 100 picks this season than another top 30 pick next year. Yeah, good point. I do. I like this uh, draft as well. I also graded Luke with a B plus. Uh, I like Faltano. I think that's one of the best picks yeah. he made here. Again, I talked about how much I like Corley as a wide receiver uh, prospect. Yeah. I think that's a good pick as well. And look, I know we talked a lot about McCarthy and the ups and downs, the ins and outs of that. Uh, this kid's going to be a solid quarterback in this league right. because he's got the makeup to do it and he's got the right attitude and he's accurate. And anytime you can bring those into a pro level, you know you're going to be able to succeed. The question is whether or not it makes sense for the Patriots at that point, and we'll see. But, Luke, a tip of the cap. Thank you so much for your submission, and thank you Appreciate for it. all the support that you provide to Locked On Patriots. But, Murph, we're just scratching the surface. We here. are. As Al Pacino would say, we're just getting warmed up. <laughs> In just a moment, Murph, we're going to talk about the big three. One of our everydayers from 2023 is yeah. back this year, and he's back in a big way. Our man Giannis is about to submit a mock draft that is going to make wow. Murph really, really happy. Let's just say a lot of big round men sitting under the draft tree for Murph to unwrap on draft weekend. How many and who? We're going to tell you in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Locked On listeners, what's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Maybe go for a run or take a nap, read a book, or maybe spend some extra time with family and friends. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time, but the question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. Therapy can also empower you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist 
and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. Locked On listeners, thank you so much for joining us here today on Locked On Patriots. It is Mock Draft Monday. It is also hashtag Locked On Murph Monday. And because of that, we are joined by the Count of Murphy Fisto himself, the Green King of Sting, my good friend, the legend himself, Thomas Murphy. And Murph, in the previous segment, we talked a little J.J. McCarthy. Yep. We talked a little Troy Fautano, a couple of standouts from the combine over yep. the weekend that I think really did a lot to help their cause and increase their draft status. But I really don't think there were a whole lot of players that did a lot to hurt themselves no. over the weekend either. But one guy that seems to be fluctuating a little bit when it comes to enthusiasm about his place in this draft, believe it or not, is LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. Right. A lot of people are thinking he may not necessarily be a lock at number three if, in fact, he's there for the New England Patriots at this point. A lot of people think that the consensus one and two are still Caleb Williams and Drake May, yep. but that the Patriots may not be locked into Jaden and may actually consider other options. Well, one of our everydayers from 2023 is back, and he's back in a big way. And we love this guy. He always submits via email. He's a big supporter of Locked On Patriots. And our good friend, Giannis Andreal. And Giannis Murph has the Patriots trading a little bit, but not too far down. Those of you that are watching this on YouTube can see there are a lot of trade banners there next to these picks. I will say this. And we will tweet out Giannis's trades because there were just too many of them to fit right. on the screen here, folks. But he stayed within the parameters. Every pick he acquired and yep. traded, Murph, was for 2024. So tip of the cap to Giannis for that. But uh, he's got the Patriots going. Jaden Daniels at number five. Murph, I still have my doubt that Jaden is going to slip to number five. We hear an awful lot about fluctuations, things of that right. nature happening right after the combine. Players ascending a little bit. Uh, maybe some posturing going on from agents and pundits and, you know, everybody kind of working together to maybe grease the wheels a little bit for a certain candidate. But I would say to anyone that feels that this kid's resume or this kid's readiness to be an NFL ready quarterback and a pro level ready quarterback completed 72% of his passes last year, 3,812 yards, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions, yep. 10 rushing touchdowns. I think the top dual threat quarterback in this class. And I do yeah. say that knowing that Caleb Williams is sitting there, folks. I do recognize that. I worry a little bit about Daniel's ability to operate in the pocket. I think he needs work there consistently, not necessarily play by play, folks. But when you force him to stand in the pocket and go through all of his progressions and then make an accurate throw, that's something that he still needs a little work with. The thing that makes me feel a little bit better about that is. This is where Alex Van Pelt and TC right. McCartney shine. They know how to teach that type of progression, that type of discipline. So I think that can be acquired. If you look at where he improved most from previous season into this season, I think it's throwing the deep ball. Throwing 30 to 40 yards down the field was never this kid's strong suit, but we saw him do it at LSU last year. Right. I know he had a great supporting cast around him, and that makes a lot of difference. But I think this is something he can do consistently. If the Patriots invest in his supporting uh, cast around him, I think this kid could be special. So to pick him up at five, Yanni's, I really like this one. Yeah, I do too. Uh, it, it was a nice pickup at five with the with the moves that he made around it. My my hesitation with Daniels is that all the talent that he had around him. He had two first round picks uh, to throw to this mm. season. All right. He's, uh, you know, we, we've just been through this. Okay. We've just been through this. We, we all saw what Mac Jones was able to do in college and we fell in love with it. And, you know, come to find out the talent that was around him maybe had a little bit more to do with that than we wanted to admit to ourselves at that point in time. Um, but Jaden Daniels is a dual threat guy. The thing that gives me hesitation about that is the fact that he doesn't he doesn't look to make people miss or he gets hit a lot. All right. And Jaden Daniels is not one of um one of how should we say the the Roethlisberger type 
of body. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we could end up with two slim reapers on the on the same uh, on the same um, roster, and and that gives me pause when uh, when talking about you know bringing a man this felt into the NFL. You know, you're gonna be getting hit by you know full grown men. Agreed. Uh, six four two hundred. There's definitely uh, a need to maybe put on a little bit of bulk uh, in terms of being able to absorb some of those hits. I understand where you're coming from, but <clears throat> when you look at this kid one on one, I've seen him make defenders miss, and he can do it. He does have the ability. If he's left unaccounted for on any occasion, which I don't well, think yeah. he will be all that much of in the NFL, this kid can break for forty to fifty yards. He has that explosiveness. That's something Mac Jones did not have. So, in terms of no. the supporting cast around him, I do understand where we have been down this road before. But look at Jaden Daniels' ability on quarterback run design plays when he can control the tempo with his legs on quarterback power, quarterback counter, uh, quarterback draw plays. That's where I think he separates himself and is able to maybe account for some of the lack of talent that he has around him. But Without further ado, my buddy's chomping at the bit to get to oh this, and God. I'm not going to deprive him any longer. Those of you that are watching this on YouTube can see that Giannis just pulled off the offensive tackle hall of the century. Yeah. Four straight tackles for right. 32, 40, 64, and 66, all acquired picks, folks. So if you're checking your draft boards at home and you don't see any of those numbers, these are all picks that Giannis traded for successfully Starting off with Arizona's Jordan Morgan, Houston's Patrick Paul, Missouri's Javon Foster, and of course Texas's Christian Jones. Murph, I'm just going to let you handle this. Yeah, How I excited mean, were you when you saw this? I would have been thrilled with with Patrick Paul and and Christian Jones. It, it just it you know, but he gave me Jordan Morgan. He gave me Foster. Unbelievable. I mean, now this, this I, you you made the will, dude. <laughs> okay, you are now in my will. All right, the the albums of your choice will will come off of my shelf and go to you. This is a fantastic. Oh my God! Now, um, Patrick Paul is just a monster, and we've mm -hmm. talked about uh, Christian Jones off and on for the past month. You know, just a mammoth man. Um, not only does he give us, you know, I think three quality starters he did the, the swing tackle um potential is unbelievable the depth is unbelievable we talked about it at nauseum this year the lack of depth at tackle um not just with the patriots but throughout the league uh is fundamentally mind-numbing um the and our guy just just went off here and and set the Patriots up for the next five years at the tackle spot. They really did. You could you could probably say goodbye to everybody on this uh on this roster right now. I I I God I I I'm I'm speechless. Yeah, it's that good, folks. It really is. Yeah. In terms of realism, well, I don't necessarily yeah. know if we're there, but no, no, bottom no, no. line, whatever you can do to pull this off, and I give Yanni's a lot of credit. He's a creative drafter. We remember this from last year. I still remember right. some of the picks that he submitted last season that looked a little bit on the um, unorthodox side of the scale. But bottom line, if you can pull it off and you have the ability to do it, tip of the cap to you. So, Giannis, I love this, and I know Murph does as well. Uh, yeah. Before we get to grading time here, uh, when you look at the rest of this hall, Murph, starting off with uh, Jonathan Brooks running back out of Texas right here, going all the way down to cornerback Cam Hart out of Notre Dame, Right. What are your thoughts? Who is the diamond in the rough in this group in the latter part of uh, Giannis? Yeah, track? Ben Sinat. Um, you know, I, I, I love this pick at 71. I think it would be fantastic. He took Cade, so Cade Stover at 70, Sana at 71. And it is, you know, of course we, we talked, uh, we've talked a, a lot about Brandon Rice over yeah. the past few weeks. And that was a, a great pick there at 73. I don't think he's going to be there at 73. Mm, I, I really don't, but, um, you could get one of the two tight ends here at you know in the early 70s or, or maybe just before that maybe you know um you grab him at at you know 66 and and you know or or 64 and but but no they 
this team definitely needs tight ends, and these are two guys that are going to be able to do it all. And, you know, bottom line, Murph, that tight end position may have a, a bigger need than we thought it was going to. You heard the reports over the weekend about Hunter Henry and two yep. sides being far apart. Murph, what are they doing to me up there at one Patriots place? The San Diego Patriots are no longer going to be in Foxborough. Up first, Adrian Phillips goes, then Hunter Henry yep. goes. Now the next thing you're going to tell me, they're not going to sign Austin Eckler in the offseason. Oh, uh, it's heartbreaking, Murph. It is heartbreaking, it is. but no, all kidding aside, uh, I like Stover's game. I like Sinat's game. These two can be complementary pieces to one another. You pick them up at 70 and 71, I think that's a great haul. And then I just love, I absolutely love the contested catchability uh, of Brendan Rice Brendan and the Rice. toughness he yeah. brings to the table. Not a pure separator like his dad, Jerry, but this kid right. can make catches and he can go into the open field and make guys miss because he's physical, he's tough, and he's smart. Very, very intelligent. After all, Murph, if he ever needs help, was a better consigliere than his father. We are at grading time. Yanis's first submission of 2024. What say you, Professor Don Murph? A plus. This mm. is an A plus draft. I mean, yeah. I, if it falls this way, it's 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 not going to fall this way. There's no way that <laughs> this happens. There's no way that the Patriots end up making me this happy and drafting not one, not two, not three, but four offensive tackles inside the top seventy. Um, it, it, it's it's it would be a dream come true. A very good haul overall, and. Yeah. Um, Bottom line, folks, Giannis keep them coming in. Giannis' submission was through email, folks. So right. continue to send those in. You don't necessarily just have to send them in by social media. Email works as well. Folks, we've enjoyed the wisdom and counsel of two amazing mock drafts. But guess what? We are not done yet because there are three segments here on Locked On Patriots. And that means three mock drafts. And our next one, if you thought this past one made Murph smile... This one is really going to warm his heart here. We are going to wrap things up here on Locked On Patriots in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Basketball season is in full swing. And with FanDuel, you can make cheering on your favorite green team in the hub more enjoyable, more exciting, and maybe even a little more profitable. Bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets. Live same-game parlays exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on Locked On Patriots, breaking down listeners' submitted mock drafts. And once again, all of you everydayers, including some of you casual listeners, first-time submitters, Really, truly continue to hit it out of the park. Murph, we've been blessed with some amazing mock drafts, and we're only three weeks in, folks. There's still a lot of time to get your mock drafts in because, bottom line, Murph, it allows us to talk about some of the players that you all may like to see in a New England Patriots uniform. And I think a few in this next draft are really going to catch the sharp eye of my good friend here. We have some Murph favorites on this draft. And who better? It's submitted by a URI guy, Murph. You know, I got to give some credit to all yeah. of my home state brethren here. My dad was a URI Ram, so automatically I got to like this guy. And it was funny because when he submitted it, he wasn't sure he was going to make it in just under the deadline. But I like the draft. I like the Rhode Island connection. So Corey Wentworth got his great work featured here. Corey moved around the board a little here. The Patriots on the clock for the first time at number six as opposed to number three. And Murph, Corey did hear what you've been saying the Patriots should do for a while. Keep moving down. Patriots take Joe Alt out of Notre Dame at number six. Yeah. I know you love this. Uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think of his ability to move down to number six? Does this feel right to you? I thought I thought it was it was a bit far down. I don't think Joe will make it there. Um, but but I love it. I love Alt at six. It, it's fantastic. I love Alt at three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe Alt, I I've, um, made it. Uh, abundantly clear is my draft crush this year has been all season long. 
Uh, I would have loved to take him last year in the second round, but he decided to come back to Notre Dame and, and, you know, just ball out, just completely (laughs) ball out. Um, I, I, I think this is uh, a great pick. Um, you know, you automatically are, are at a B with this, no matter what you did in, in there, you could have taken me in the second round and you still would have gotten to me. <laughs> well, moving right along, Murph at number 34, he gets right. another Murph favorite and another guy that had a Hell tremendous yeah. week down in Indianapolis, Vlad McConkey looking right. great out there in the open field, wide receiver out of Georgia. This kid is skyrocketing through the boards right now. 34, do you think maybe this could be um, a steal here for uh, the New England Patriots, considering where he may be moving up? Could you see him going higher than 34? Yeah, I could see Ladd McConkey going in the first round easily right now, especially after the the work that he did at the Combine. You know, Uh, 4.39, I think it was, his his 40, 1.52 at the 10-yard split. He, he, during during the... uh, the position drills, he looked every bit like a uh, NFL wide receiver. He was just fantastic. His balance, his, his feet, his, his hands were, you know, his hands were the most impressive in the entire group. All right. Mm-hmm. The, 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 if, if he could touch it, he could catch it. Um, you know, the, the body control that he, that this kid shows while he's, uh, while he's in the, in, in the air or if he needs to turn back and grab a ball, it's just great. This, this would, this would absolutely make my day if Ladd McConkey was there at 34 and I would have serious words for everybody at one Patriots place. If they passed on this kid at 34. Yeah, I really do believe that at 34, this kid is the value that you need, the type of player that you need with the attitude that's going to succeed no matter where he is but really uh, just that prototypical Patriot that I think could really make an impact here for a number of years. I love that pick. Jatavion Sanders at number 39, a tight end. Hi, Claire. Um, Bottom line, Steve and I talked about Jatavion on Friday here on Locked On Patriots. This has the potential for a really big upside as well. I think potentially a tight end, one of the future here for New England, maybe even as soon as this year, if Hunter is not going to be back. This kid uh, really, I think, has the ability to make an impact. 68, late great 68 right here. The Patriots finally addressing the quarterback position. Spencer Rattler out of South Carolina. I know Rattler is kind of a polarizing figure. A lot of Patriots fans look at him as nothing more than a career backup, uh, a nice option, but definitely not someone you want starting. But there are a select few, Murph, that look at Rattler's game and look at the transition that he made from Oklahoma coming into South Carolina and really making some noise. This could be a value pick here at 68 if the Patriots play their cards right with it. Yeah, I mean, at 68, I'm probably not that upset. I did not like Rattler's um, uh, showing at the combine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, 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 you know, the, the man finished last, dude. Mm-hmm. He finished last in, in everything, and and that's that's got to mean something. It was it was a disappointing day for him. Uh, you know, the, there weren't a lot of of quarterbacks to to test against. And, you know, the biggest names out there decided to sit it out. Um, I don't think that it's going to have a lot to do with his uh, his draft stock. And I do think that, you know, here at 68, he can come in, he can sit. You you can see uh, 68 is developmental. OK, mm-hmm. right. That's it. And, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with rolling the dice at 68. Um you know, it, it would mean that the, the Patriots are going to uh, to sign a um, a veteran and but probably one that is going to be here for more than a season, right. more than a season or two. OK, uh, this this would definitely help my fiendish plot of Gardner Minshew. <laughs> yeah. And bottom line, folks, I think Murph is absolutely right on that. If Spencer Rattler is coming in here at 68 then right. that means the Patriots are signing a veteran that's going to be more than a one-year bridge guy. He's going right. to come in and play at least a few years. But Murph is absolutely right. When you have the big three out and they're not right. participating in these drills, it is your opportunity and your chance to shine. Credit guys like J.J. McCarthy and especially Michael Penix Jr. has stepped up in a big way. Right. They prove themselves. 
Rattler didn't necessarily have the best weekend, and that could hurt him in the long run. So if we're looking at the rest of this draft, Murph, um, what are your thoughts on potential diamond in the rough in Corey's draft? Yeah, I, I, I hate to run home to mama here, but I like Garrett Greenfield at 182. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Greenfield set a couple of records down here at the Combine. I think he's a uh, a battle-tested um kind of guy he did he's you know six seven 320 pounds i think that uh that that you know he has he has fantastic size he's a he's got a thick body um like i say he, i think he was a, a three-year starter there and uh you know he, he's a fantastic run blocker he really is he's mm. he needs to work on his pass blocking but this kid can get out there and grate the road of course, you know what direction I'm going into. I'm not yeah. going to gush poetically so much, and I appreciate I my good friend leaving yeah. that one on the board. Number 136, Dylan Lauby. Look, I'm not the first guy to mention Lauby yes, as a possibility for the Patriots, but I definitely think I was among them. And this is a kid I've liked now for a while. I love his pass-catching ability, and once again, this kid showed an ability to break very quickly. If he can hone that in, uh, this kid's got potential draft steel written all over him. Uh, for any team that's lucky enough to be able right. to bring him in, I'd love to see him yeah. here in New England and stay home. But bottom line, I think this is a good pick. Top to bottom, I like this draft. Murph, what say you? What grade are you giving Corey? Um, I'm giving him a solid A for this mm. draft. I am. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he hit on all the cylinders. He he got the he got the back. He got the project quarterback, and I think it's gonna. Uh, this could really work out. Yeah, I'm giving Corey an A as well on this. Getting Alt at number six. McConkey absolutely yeah. after the weekend he had and right. after the showing he had at the combine, definitely a great pick. And when you include Dylan Lobby, you get extra you get extra right. brownie points from me. So bottom line, a tip of the cap to the URI guy. And that's tough because I'm a Providence College guy. So, you know, I have to all full disclosure, Corey, if you've listened to the show before, you know I'm a friar, but uh three great mock drafts. I always enjoy breaking these down with you. Thank you so much for taking time out to help me here on Locked On Patriots sift through the myriads of mock drafts that we get each and every week. Oh, it was a fantastic time. We love getting all of these drafts from you people. We love going over them. And just because yours wasn't picked this week doesn't mean it won't be picked next week. So, you know, hold out hope. Absolutely. And again, Murph makes a good point. We may bring some of these drafts that didn't make the cut today in later on this week. So make sure to stay locked into Locked On Patriots each and every day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And folks, once again, I thank you all for taking time out of your day here today to join us and to make Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. On behalf of my good friend, the Count of Murphy Fisto himself, the legendary Thomas Murphy, I'm Mike DeBate, reminding you all to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow on Locked on Patriot.